will see your anointing just by the presence of your life. Yes. Amen. So we want to look at that. We want to talk to you yes. this morning about the apostolic anointing. First thing I want to do, thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has taken me a little bit away from what I, I had written down because he wants to lay the foundation Ooh. so that you can see apostolically how this looks to God. Amen? Amen. So let's go. Turn your Bibles with me to if you have a word for everyone that asks you the reason. Why do you keep going to church? <laughs> Ain't nobody in your family going to church. Wow. Why do you give the people your money? That's too much money to be given away. Why do you do that stuff, right? Do people ever ask you that? Yes, Especially, yeah. you know, yes. unregenerated people. They always want to know why do you do what you do for God, right? Right. They do. But then they always want to know, too, why, why do you have so much joy? You going through all of this stuff. Why are you still smiling? Why are you still holding on? Why are you still believing, right? Right. So let's look at Ephesians chapter 4. I want to start at verse 11. No, I'm going to start at verse 7. In the New King James Version, it says, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gifts. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive. And he gave gifts Somebody said gifts. Yes. Gifts to men. That's women too. Mm -hmm. It's not gender specific. Amen. Yeah. Now this, he ascended. What does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might feel all things. That's good. He came to get it done. And he went to hell first and preached a revival just to let the devil know I have all authority over the heavens and the earth and beneath the earth. Verse 11, and he gave him, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness. Somebody say fullness. Fullness, fullness of fullness. Christ. That we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love, we may grow up in all things unto him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joins and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective work by which every part does its share. share. Does its share. Yeah. Does its share. Causing growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. love. Now the Lord gave unto the church positions of authority so that the body would be perfected, right. made complete, made whole, lacking nothing. He gave to the church men and women anointed for such positions as the apostle, as the prophet, as the evangelist, as the pastor, as the teacher. Now that's just one. He gave gifts, many gifts. There are many gifts that God has given the body but the whole purpose of the body is to do what Jesus did, is to take over and have all authority to subdue the earth and have dominion over it, have rulership over it. And how we do that is through the gifts that God has given us. But the gift that God has given you is ineffective without the anointing. Amen. You have to have the 
anointing. We hear a lot about the anointing. We hear, we hear preachers preach about the anointing. We sing about the anointing. We dance in the anointing. The anointing, the anointing, the anointing. Why do we talk so much about the anointing? Because it is a necessary ingredient so you, like Jesus, can get the job done. So you, like Jesus, can fulfill all things as it pertains to your life, your ministry, and your family. Amen. God has assigned you with certain assignments, each one of us, and that varies according to God's will. It is God that chooses to anoint men, and not men. We can impart the anointing, but we can only do it by the unctioning of the Holy Spirit. You cannot anoint yourself. You can go to seminary or cemetery, whichever one you want to go to. You can go get your PhD. You can do all of those things, and they are great. I don't deny that they have, they have value. But the greatest thing that you can do is ask the Lord to anoint me so that I can do the will of the Father. I can finish what he started. In me. Philippians 1, 6 says, he that began a good work in you, he will complete it. And how God completes the work in you is he gives you something supernatural called the anointing so that you can do powerful things. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so you can do powerful things. That's why he gives you the anointing. He gives you the anointing so that you can supersede in life. That's why he gives you the anointing. So you can supersede in life. So that you can fulfill the course that God has set out for you. And without the anointing, you will never be able to do that. Amen. Without the anointing. Amen. God gives you the anointing for all things. Not some things. Come on. Yes. And the anointing, it works every time. Now what the anointing is, is it's a supernatural impartation that comes directly from God. It is the manifested glory of God. It is the glory of God, his manifested glory in your life. And it's visible physically when it's in operation. You can physically see the evidence of the anointing. Without the anointing, I can't even preach Especially when stuff like that is happening just a minute ago. I can't even preach because it's so distracting. Things can come in and literally distract you and throw you off. But the anointing says, keep it moving. That's keep right. it moving. Yeah. You ain't got time to be looking over here and looking over there and worried about what people are doing and worried about what people are saying. As a matter of fact, when you're flowing in the anointing as a preacher, you can't even really see the faces of people. I look at you, but I can't even see you because what I'm seeing is God on you and what God is targeting in you. So I'm not necessarily seeing your face. I'm looking when the realm of the spirit by the spirit to see what you need spiritually. Because when you get what you need spiritually, your natural life will align itself to that. Amen? Let's look at Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. I feel a preacher this morning. Like when the anointing comes on, on me or on a man or a woman, it empowers you to sure preach. Does. And I'm not just talking that good old feel good stuff. I'm talking about it empowers you to preach the word of the Lord that causes a shaking in a man's soul and spirit and causes him to arise out of darkness into light. When the anointing comes, it literally comes in and busts through the darkness. That's what Jesus said. That's why he said, let your light shine. That men would see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven. Don't ever be afraid to let the anointing loose. Because when the anointing gets loose, the devil gets gone. Amen. 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 Luke 4. I want to look at verse 18. This is Jesus. He's talking. Well, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up to 17. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. This is Jesus talking. Jesus is saying, as he's opened the book to the congregation in the temple, he says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He was making a prophetic declaration that I am now operating in my purpose. And I'm doing that because God himself, the father has 
has anointed me. He's anointed me. And here's what he says. He's anointed me for. That means he's empowered me. He's given me a supernatural ability. I have something today that I didn't have yesterday. Because in Jesus' life, prior to this moment, we don't see him doing anything supernatural. But when the anointing came upon Jesus, he was anointed to do something supernatural that allowed him to operate in destiny. And he says this. He says, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And the recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. And to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today, somebody say today. Today, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. What Jesus was saying was today you see the anointing. Today you see the power of heaven in the earth. Today you see the miraculous. Today you see the ability to heal being manifested. Today you will see the captive set free. You will see deliverance. Today you will see the blind eyes open. Today is the day where the anointing has come. scriptures to back you up. Be like, no, devil, this is what the Lord said. This is the word of the Lord right here. And the word is eternal. The word will not return void. The word will always go hit its target because the word itself is anointed. Amen. When you speak the word, you are speaking the anointing of God. Christ himself. When we talk about the Messiah, the crystal, that means the anointed one. The anointed one has anointed you and you have now the ability to do exactly what he did. Amen. Exactly. Amen. Exactly. An exact replica of what he did. When he called Lazarus from the grave, you have the ability. I'm telling you, don't, don't stir that thing up and then go to the cemetery. You'll wake up everybody there. Yeah. Yeah. They said that's why he called Lazarus by name because if he would have said, come out, the whole graveyard would have been empty. Every tomb would have just opened up and everybody, Lazarus' uncle and mama and daddy, then would have came out too. He had to be specific. When you're calling up a dead thing, you call that thing by name and tell it to awake and get up. I need you to do something. Be it your money, your finances, whatever it is, you, whatever has died in your life. The Lord said we're in a season of restoration. You call that thing by the anointing. And you know when the anointing is stirred up in you. You know there are days that you don't really feel the anointing. It doesn't mean that it's not there. It just needs to be stirred up. Paul told Timothy, stir up the gifts of God. Stir them up. How do you get the anointing stirred up? One, the first way to get it stirred up is worship. Yeah. Man, you put on a worship song and you began to sing to the Lord. I'm not talking about all of this stuff, fleshly stuff, where you just singing to yourself. No, no, no. You began to minister to the Lord. That's what worship is about. It's about opening your heart and singing unto the Lord. And oftentimes he'll give you a new song. That's how you know you're flowing in the anointing. When new sound starts to come and new words, just what was happening in the worship, that new sound that was coming, that was a new song. If you start, don't sing to the worship team. We're not singing to you. We're singing to him. You just get to be a participant in our party. That 
what all it is. We're having a holy party here and, and, and a dialogue with the Lord. And you get to be a participant. And what we're teaching you how to do in this ministry is how to worship. How to sing unto the Lord. How to open your heart and allow your sound to be heard in the heavens. That's what worship is about. And when you worship in spirit and in truth, that thing stirs up your anointing so much so that it's hard to even stop it. I was trying to slow the worship down. And every time I'd come to the front to try and slow it down, it seemed like the Lord would kick up the worshiper's anointing. And they would just take it to another octave. I'm just like, whoa, we're going to worship all morning if this keeps going on. But it was good because it was the sound of heaven coming into the earth. Jesus comes up on the scene. And in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, he comes in and he says, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What he was saying is the anointing has now manifested. It's multiplied when the anointing comes, man. It deals with things. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38 says this is them giving testimony of Jesus and in verse 38 he says how God anointed what did God do to Jesus he anointed him he empowered him he gave the, uh, him the ability a supernatural charge how God anointed Jesus Jesus uh, Jesus Jesus what a name huh? that's not Jesus that's Jesus of Nazareth, all in one word. I just got a new one. Oh, my God. Somebody call Webster, please, and tell him we got a new one. You know, I was reading in the dictionary one time, and it said, how do you get a new word? I was reading on dictionary.com. How do you get a word in the dictionary? And Webster said, create one. So there's words. Y'all can laugh if you want to. See, I just created something. You know some knucklehead on TV ain't going to be preaching that in a couple of months. And Jesus, I heard a minister from Vegas. <laughs> you created, right? That tells us that there are still creative forces and the force that are at, that are not yet coming to the earth. There are words that have not come into the earth. And it happens just like that under the anointing. Now we got a new word in Jesus. <laughs> And Jesus of Nazareth, <laughs> God anointed Jesus of Nazareth by the Holy Spirit with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. Jesus was anointed by God to deal with oppression. Amen. The anointing, the reason why you need the anointing is because the anointing deals with oppression. The anointing deals with the devil. The anointing empowers you to overthrow and overcome the devil. Really, the anointing, you need the anointing because the anointing will eradicate every yoke. In Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, it says it is the anointing that destroys the yokes. If you've got heavy burdens, the reason why you need the anointing because the anointing gives you the ability to deal with the heavy burden. And the heavy burdens will come. The more you pursue God, the more the enemy throws stuff at you. The more he tries to hurt you. The more he tries to discourage you. The more he tries to bring you down. And the more of the anointing you need because the anointing will deal with the devil. You can't deal with the devil on your own. You can't deal with the devil just by quoting a couple of scriptures. The devil knows scriptures. He knows the Bible. I mean, he stepped to Jesus and said, well, it's written, right? So you just can't deal with the devil on his level. No, you have to up the ante. You have to take that thing a little bit higher when you're dealing with the devil. When you're dealing with the devil, you have to go, you have to ascend above him into the place where the anointing is fully activated and now you can stomp on his head. Now you can shut him down. And I know there are seasons when the anointing is so activated that the devil is intimidated by me. Yes. And I know it because people start acting funny. People start acting funny. People that don't normally act funny start to get a little goofy on you. And I say, oh, the anointing is intimidating the devil. Because I see so, so, uh, sister so-and-so is getting a little goofy in the head. I mean, she used to love my anointing. And now all of a sudden it's not, it, it, oh, she's not the only one that's anointed? What? That just means that the devil is acting up and he will always use people that will affect you. He will never ever use some knucklehead in the street because, and even if he does, they won't have a great impact on you. He might use somebody to say something crazy, but it won't stick. But when it's somebody that you love, that you honor, that you know, that you respect, he uses them and all of a sudden now you feel in some kind of way and I'm like, Lord, what's going on? The 
the anointing is increasing and the devil is mad. But I use the anointing to deal with the devil. That's what Jesus said. The spirit of the Lord is upon me and he, he has anointed me. He gave me this power to do what I need to do. He gave me this power to ascend higher. He gave me this power to succeed. He gave it to me and I am going to use it. Come on now. Yeah, you need the anointing. The anointing is a sign from that God is with you. Right? It is a sign that God is with you. It empowers you to do good. See, in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, Jesus went about doing good. Right. Having a difficult time acting right? You need some act right on your side? Right? You need to, your husband needs some act right, your wife needs some act right, your kids need some act right. Just stir up that gift of God on the inside of you. Put on some worship music, get in God's presence. And the moment you feel that thing surging, because it, it is substance, you'll feel it, man. I feel the anointing. Today, I feel the anointing increase. I, I feel the anointing all the time, but today I feel the elevation of the anointing that is taking me to the high places so that I can bring you up higher and you can understand who you are. And now we can shut the devil down as a force of God Amen. and the body of God coming together you have your part I have mine when you're walking this thing called life you need people that are walking with you and you need people that are anointed as well you don't want people around you on a, on a close basis in your inner court and in, in your personal space you don't want people like that walking with you and they don't have the ability to ascend higher they're not operating in the anointing they're operating in the flesh because the Bible says no flesh can glory in his presence so if you're in the flesh you're out of his presence That's right. That's right. Yeah. you want people that can go in with you you want people that as you're walking the devil see us walking me and my besties man we be walking and the devil see us coming and he'd be like, whoa, oh, these girls from Vegas has come to turn the world upside down. That's why I, tr I don't travel alone when I'm preaching. I don't go by myself. I take anointed people with me that are, know how to operate in the anointed. And, when, and, and, and even when you're not feeling it, they know how to stir that thing up, know how to stir up the gifts of God, know how to get in his presence, know how to ascend. Because the anointing will do this. It will give you discernment. Sometimes you're confused about, well, I don't know if that's God or not. I don't really know if God said that to me. Well, when you're operating the anointing, there is no denying if God said it or if he didn't. The anointing gives you, it gives you dead-eye anointing uh, vision so that you can see. And now you can see what the devil is doing and I can see what God is doing. And I'm going to partner with that to shut that down. That's it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Look at 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. The Lord wants you to know that this thing called the anointing, it's something that God has given you as a, as a gift of God for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body so that we can all come into a place of perfection. So we're not children tossed to and fro, being tricked by the devil, believing every wind of doctrine that come along, every knucklehead that come along and self-proclaimed prophets. And oh, this is, what, this is what God has called me to do. And now you on YouTube listen to everything they're saying and their lives are raggedy and you just can't see it because you don't have the spiritual eyes to discern it and you're not close enough in their personal space to be able to look. But the anointing helps you see it. Yes. There are certain things, I don't care how much they hoop and holler, you can spit all you want to, but don't spit on me because you ain't spitting nothing out except flesh. Yeah. And when we have the discernment to see that that's not criticism, that's called wisdom. Yeah. I've been tricked into sending people money late at night. Call and get this water and it's going to bless you. And I got the water. And they got the hundred, and I got nothing. Come on. I kept putting the water everywhere, and the water did nothing but wet up my house. And I had to get Kleenex to clean everything up. But I learned because I began to utilize the anointing more and more. Know this, though, that the anointing will separate you. The anointing is so powerful that it intimidates others. And then, and then God will separate you. He takes you through seasons where he alone, he's alone with you. And as God is alone with you, he's not just alone with you doing nothing. He's alone with you, empowering you, giving you a greater anointing, increasing the anointing. Because the anointing can grow. And God wants to increase that thing in you more and more. As it increases, the more it increases, the more you decrease. Amen. 
the more your flesh dies, the more your spirit comes alive. And your spirit comes alive, man. What is written in your book becomes your reality. That's a silly moment right there, isn't it? What is written in your book becomes your reality. The anointing will take you beyond the earth realm, deep into the realm of the spirit where principalities and powers and the host of heaven is. We were in here praying a couple Wednesdays ago and all of a sudden I saw eyes, two sets of eyes. I saw them all over the building, thousands and thousands of eyes. And I said, God, what's going on? What are all these eyes? And he said, it's the watchers, the host of heaven, participating with prayer, watching and tending to your words to take them to their destinations. As we were praying, Jerry, the watchers came, grabbed our words, and took them right to where they needed to be and dropped them right in the blessing. Thousands of watchers. And we were so anointed. And that stirred up the anointing even more. When you know God is with you, when you know God is walking with you, he's encouraging you, he's, he's participating in that moment with you. It's when you know God got your back in that moment and you, you develop bold faith. You will pray big, crazy prayers, prayers that are impossible for you to do. But the anointing activated empowers you to do the impossible. The anointing activated is what gets you that big blessing. That thing you've been waiting on, you need the anointing because it will supercharge you, supersize you to get it. Because the blessing is so big, you've got to become as big as the blessing to get it. You can't get the blessing with your small mindedness. You can only get the blessing with your big spirit. And so God increases the anointing so that you can get something that's bigger than you. The anointing gives you influence. People don't even know you because you've been hidden for a season. But the anointing activated in you causes you to do things that are so outside of what you normally do, do that people start to take notice of you. People will notice you because the anointing draws them. It's attractive. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. When you lift up Jesus, and you can only lift him up when you out, out, outside of the flesh, when you're in the spirit, you lift him up. And that thing, and the more you lift Jesus up, the more the anointing builds and builds and builds and builds up in you to the point where now you start to do things that you wouldn't normally do. You start to speak boldly. You start to pray prayers you would normally pray. Prayers that you only thought about praying. Now all of a sudden you're praying them. Now all of a sudden you're praying big, bold prayers. What happened? Same thing that happened to the disciples. They were in the upper room and the anointing of God fell upon them and then that anointing supercharged them and they went out of that upper room out of fear into boldness and then they began to proclaim the name of the Lord. They began to proclaim the supernatural things of Jesus and not only did they proclaim them but they saw the manifestation of them because the anointing was upon them to do it. I'm anointed. Somebody ought to say that I am anointed. I am anointed by God. He has anointed me. You ought to say that. You ought to let the world know I am anointed. Come on and declare that over yourself. The only person that can really declare that over you is you in this moment. You got to tell your own soul, I am anointed for such a time as this. I'm anointed to sing. I'm anointed to preach. I'm anointed to pray. I'm anointed to serve God. I'm anointed by God. I'm anointed. And because I'm anointed, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because I'm anointed, I can supersede my family's lineage. Because I'm anointed, you need the anointing to destroy those generational curses. Those generational curses aren't just going to go away by themselves. The devil's been in the courts of heaven uh, telling the judge all the things that your great, great, great granddaddy did. And now it's in your bloodline. And you can go in the anointing and say, but God, I come. And the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And you have anointed me. And I decree that thing is eradicated. You need the anointing to deal with your family. To deal with your family curses. There are things that your grandmother did that you're paying the price for. But the anointing will destroy that. Anointing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That's why, I, that's why Jesus said I'm anointed. You think he was just saying that just because he needed to know? No, he wanted all of them to know that the spirit of the Lord. I'm anointed because the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm anointed to heal. I lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Why? Because I got this thing from God called the anointing and it will awaken every sickness to the reality of heaven and that thing will die in the presence of God. I'm anointed to heal cancer. I'm anointed to eradicate diabetes. I'm anointed for that. That's why I'm in the earth in 2017. That's why I'm going into 2018, 2019, 2020, because I'm anointed to heal. And somebody's going to meet me in 2018 that need an anointing. And, they're, and it's available. Yeah. You're anointed, baby. You're anointed. The fact that you're sitting in the house of God and he's talking to you, he's telling you, you don't just have something common, you have something uncommon. And the world don't always get it, but God says, but I'll show them my anointing by what I do through you. I am anointed. Come on. Say it like you mean it. Yeah, I am anointed. Yeah, you ought to hashtag that. I am anointed, baby. Anybody sick? Oh, Rabbi Shunday came. Oh, Rabbi Shunday came. I am anointed to pray. 1 John. 1 John chapter 2. I'm going to give you a couple more scriptures. Then I'll preach. Thank you, Lord. Preach, man. Preach, man. Ooh, come on, Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. I love when the Holy Ghost shows up. Because it does things that I can't do. I love when the Holy Ghost shows up. It deals with my attitude. I love when the Holy Ghost shows up. It deals with my mindset. I love when the Holy Ghost shows up and the anointing is activated. It eradicates fear. And, sh- and I become just faithful and, and fearless. When the anointing shows up, it's all good. It's all good. When the anointing shows up, the world looks like a beautiful place because it looks like something I have authority over. Come on. God is talking to you this morning. He's talking to you. Yeah, Facebook. God is talking to you. He says you're anointed and you can't just sit down on that thing. You got to use that thing to bring the kingdom of heaven in the earth. First John chapter 2, verse 19. No, verse 20 says this, but you have an anointing. Who have an anointing? I do. Yeah, come on, touch yourself. I I got an anointing, man. I didn't realize how anointed I was until I laid hands on somebody and they really got healed. I have an anointing. You have an anointing from the Holy One. And you, who? Yeah, you. Touch your neighbor, you. 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 And you too. You. And you know all things. He says, you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is the truth. Here's what the Lord is saying. He says this in 1 John 2, 20. He says, you have an anointing. You have a supernatural charge in your spirit. Yes. And he says, and because you have this anointing, you know all things. Come on. You think you don't know? You know. When the anointing is activated, man, the whole Bible comes alive in my mind. I could quote a thousand scriptures right now because the anointing is so active. It's literally the heavens are open over my mind and I can just see scriptures. When the anointing is activated, scriptures just start to spring forth out of my innermost being. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. That's what it looks like where the the power of God just begins to flow out of your mouth. Your mouth becomes an instrument, a well-watered garden, just a watering hose that waters dry places and waters things and when you're operating in the anointing the anointing tells you what Jesus said the anointing reveals mysteries it reveals secrets Oh, Rabbi Shunday. Oh, let's go to Daniel chapter 4. Oh, Rabbi Shunday. The Lord's just doing his thing this morning. Daniel chapter 4. Listen to this. This is powerful. In Daniel chapter 4, verse 32. Daniel chapter 4. These boys were held captive 
by a crazy king called Nebuchadnezzar. And this man was so insane that he would kill his own. Yes. He didn't care. He was so he was so pride and pride he was so prideful and full of so much pride that he had a, a statue of himself built and and his men said, "Well, we need to just bow down to that daily and pray to your statue." But there was a man named Daniel that was anointed by God and he wouldn't even take on his Babylonian name. The king had changed him and his friends' names and they stuck with the name God had given them. Don't ever let people call you what God didn't say you was. No, no, no. They stuck with their God-given name. And because of that, they stuck with their God-given assignment. See, when the, you are operating the anointed, it'll keep you on course. Amen. It'll keep you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13, it says, watch. Stand fast in the faith. Be brave. Be strong. Isn't that a powerful scripture? Amen. Watch. Stand fast in the faith. Be brave. Be strong. How can I be that, Lord, when my knees are knocking? Well, you can do it because the anointing will stop your knees from knocking and cause your heart to enlarge so that you're operating in faith and not in fear. The anointing does that, man. It breaks off that fear. And it makes you fearless. We're literally not ignorant where you're just running out on a freeway, but it makes you so fearless that you're not afraid of what's going to happen next. And Daniel's in Babylon. And while he's in Babylon, the king has a dream. And the Lord is telling the king, I don't care how much power you got. I got all power. And so in Daniel chapter 4, verse 32, it says this. And seven times shall pass over you until you know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. The most high, God rules in the kingdom of men and he gives it to whomever he wants. He gives his anointing to whomever he decides. He will take a man's kingdom and bring it low and put somebody over it that don't even have a Babylonian name, yet he gives him apostolic authority to rule and reign in the kingdom of men. God of heaven am I ruling and reigning but my desire is to take over the kingdom of man and make my anointing known in the kingdom of man. He gives it. He gives the anointing to whomever he chooses. Right? You wonder why somebody else is there. Why, why can they do that and I can't do that because they're anointed for that. What God wants you to do is see what he's anointed you for. Because when you see your anointing and you begin to use your anointing. You operating in that thing. Now your anointing looks really good to you. And you don't want to be Sister Kathy. You don't want to be uh, Brother Joe. No, you want to be you because you understand that my anointing has great power and effect in the earth. And the earth will not be what she's supposed to be unless I release my anointing too. Amen. The earth, the body of Christ is coming into a fullness. And to a place where it is effective and the power of the body is seen by the world and how the body is going to do that is when everybody joins together, operates in the power of God in them and then the world's going to see a light that's brighter than even the sun because it's the light of the S-O-N It's the light of the sun of God It's the light of his glory That's what God desires is that the body a fullness coming to a place of perfection where people aren't afraid to use their gifts because they're not using their gifts by the flesh, they're using their gifts by the anointing. The anointing makes everything easy. I don't preach like this in my bathroom. <laughs> well, people wouldn't know that, but I don't preach like this in my bathroom, right? I preach like this under the anointing. Now, if the anointing came upon me in my restroom, I would preach like this. Yeah, the anointing uh, enables me to preach the word of God with authority and with boldness and, and not with timidity. And I'm not worried about what anybody else is thinking. So what if you like my dress? I like my anointing. Yeah. And my dress. Yeah. Yes, thank God for Black Friday. <laughs> Back to the anointing. <laughs> Daniel, in the kingdom, in a foreign kingdom, in the kingdom 
of a man. He interprets the dream because God anoints him to do that. And that, uh, that interpretation of the dream elevates him. It's just like Joseph. Joseph was anointed in Egypt. No matter where you are, see, here's the word of God. No matter where you are in life, catch this now, catch this. No matter where you are in life, you could be at the lowest of the lows, at the lowest you've ever been in your life. You could be the brokest you've ever been in your life. Or you can be at the height of your career. No matter where you are in life, God will anoint you and cause promotion to happen for you. You think you arrived at one place, God said, oh, baby, there is more. There is more. You ain't even got there yet, baby. You only got 10% of what I have for you. There's still a not another 90 that I want to reveal to you. And I reveal it by the anointing of God. First John. Chapter 2. First John. Again. First John. Chapter 2. Verse 27. I want to show you one more scripture. Because you are anointed. I am anointed. Come on, say that like you mean it. Yeah, say that like, hey, I want, I, I want them to hear it all anointed. up in Summerlin. I am anointed. I am anointed. And all the earth know who you are and how you operate. First John chapter 2. I'm back there again. I want to show you another scripture. In verse 26, these things I write to you concerning those who try to deceive you. Verse 27, but the anointing, the anointing which is in you, which you have received from him abides in you and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie and just as it taught you, you will abide. The anointing teaches you you're struggling reading the Bible? You're struggling having getting revelation? Yeah. You want to know how Pastor Kim or Apostle Kim or Pastor Zach or our leaders or how they get that revelation? By the anointing, man. Sometimes I have to stay in the Word. Sometimes I go in my time of prayer and I'm just dry and feel withered and, and, and lifeless. And I go in my prayer time with the Lord and I just open up the word. And I don't try to manufacture anything. I just allow the anointing of God to be activated in me. I said, God, anoint me so that I can study the word. You can ask God to anoint you. If you're feeling dry, if you're feeling lethargic, if you're feeling like I can't do this today, I'm too tired, I'm too weary, I'm too broken, I want to give up. God, anoint me to do this. I need the anointing to get this done, God. I go into my time of prayer. Anoint me to study the word so that I come out with a revelation and not just information. Information is not enough. I don't care about the information highway. I care about the revelation destiny. That's what you want. You want revelation because revelation is supernatural knowledge that is not privy to everybody else. See, the anointing that you have, not everybody have that. People around you don't all have that. If they're not walking with the Lord, they don't have the anointing. They can be gifted. They can seem like they got it together, and maybe they do naturally, but they don't have the anointing. And eventually, their own self-efforts will wear out because eventually you're going to get old. Eventually, you're going to get tired. Eventually, you're going to get weary. But when you're operating in the anointing, when you're anointed by God to do an assignment, even though you're old, your old bones don't feel it. Oh. Moses was 120 years old and climbed a mountain. What? Huh. Most of y'all can't even walk up the street. <laughs> get tired. Ooh, I gotta get to Walmart and get me a cart. <laughs> you need the anointing. Right? You need the anointing. I know, because the other day me and my mom was in Walmart. She was like, ooh, I need a cart to lean on. I'm like, girl, let me pray for you. I was just gonna drop down right there and be like, Father, in the name of Jesus. Girl, come on, let's just get this food and go. <laughs> in Walmart. <laughs> Moses, 120 years old. The Bible says that his eyes was not dim. Neither was his natural force abated. That means he had the strength of his youth because he was anointed. See, you have to be anointed to deal with six million complaining people. Yeah. That's enough to make you want to pull out a Uzi. Well, he didn't have a Uzi pull out a rock. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it was rough. But if he had a Uzi, he would have wanted to just pull it out. Shut up! Right? The anointing. Just don't. Oh, that was funny. The anointing is, it causes you to laugh, too. I can laugh at myself. 
today. I used to take myself so serious because I was anointed. But I realized the anointing is it's like a, it's a medicine. Proverbs 17, 22. It's like a medicine. It does the body good. It does the spirit good. We need some holy laughter. We need something to celebrate and rejoice about. When the angel of the Lord appeared unto Mary in Luke chapter 1, verse 28, he said, Rejoice, O highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. What he was telling Mary, he said, Mary, rejoice right here. Because God has given you an anointing. You're anointed to do something that no other woman before you or after you will do. You're anointed to give birth to a holy thing. You're anointed to give birth to a holy thing. There's a holy thing on the inside of you that is awaiting an arrival. And the earth is yearning for it. The earth is saying, give it to us. Give it to us. We need what's inside of you. We need that gift of God inside of you. We need that thing that God has placed inside of you. And you're anointed to give birth to it, Mary. Jesus. Who I heard that by the Spirit? Some of you guys, you're so anointed. And you're at the cusp of greatness. Like, all you got to do is take one more step of faith. I double down you to activate your anointing. I, I double down you right now. I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to just step into that thing and see what happens. I guarantee you right here in this dispensation of time, some of you are going to lay hands on the sick and you're going to see the manifestation of that thing and it's going to be so powerful that literally they'll walk out of the hospital. Yes, amen. Amen. The book of James. Come on, David. You can give me some music. He over there in the glory. <laughs> Whenever you feel like it, just, just flow however the Lord leads you. You're anointed. You're anointed, worship. You're anointed. And if you will, Joey, just follow him on the drums because I feel a sound coming from heaven. And I know these boys are going to pick it up because the atmosphere is saturated with the anointed right now. Right now, you guys... You think you're feeling hot. No, that's not heat. That's not the heat of man. That is the heat of the anointing that is rising up in you, inspiring you, encouraging you. Yeah, you've got another I feel like going on moment right now because the anointing of God has come and now it's surging up and it's saying, hey, we got so much to do, girl. We ain't got time to sit around and cry about what didn't happen. In James chapter 5, Verse 14 and 15. James says, Is anyone sick among you? Let them call for the elders, elders of the church. Not just elders, but elders of the church. That means the leaders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him. And it says that the prayer of the righteous will save the sick. And if he has done anything wrong, committed any sin, it will be forgiven him. Is anyone sick among you? Yes. Let them call for the elders. God is raising up more elders of the church, more leaders, because you carry an anointing to pray over not just pray with. It says let them pray over him. Anointing him. It's not just the physical oil of the anointing. It's the spiritual application of the anointing. Your hands are anointed to heal. Your mouth is anointed with power to speak and change a place. You can change a city just with the anointing alone. You can change a family with the anointing. You can change a nation with the anointing. And the Bible says one can put a thousand to flight and two can put ten thousand. But if the body comes together, unified, operating in her anointing, yes. Yes. we can shut the yes. whole kingdom of darkness down. Yes. Yes. We can loose the captives. That's what Jesus did. He literally went to hell in the power of the anointing, preached a revival, and he says he led captivity captive. He led out of prison, out of the dominion of hell. He led the captives out, set them free, loosed them from their chains, loosed them from their infirmities, loosed them from their failures, loosed them from poverty. 
family. Loose them from dysfunction. Loose them from addiction. Loose them from cancer. Loose them from diabetes. Loose them from heart disease. He loose them. Because the Spirit of the Lord God is upon you. And He has anointed you. You are anointed for such a time as this. You came into the earth in this dispensation of time. Because God wanted to bring the heavens into the earth. And He's doing it through you. Come on. That's it. Hey. The Spirit of the Lord is here. your house. 